We're not. Now we are. We are live. Now we're <laughs> now live. we're live. Why weren't we alive before? I have no idea. Hey, okay. what happened to that groovy music you were playing just a minute ago? You told me. You told me it sounded like crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned it off. I guess, Wait, yeah. no trying to incorporate an intro music. Trying to make this more entertaining for you folks out there. It's just not going to happen, Carlos. Okay. This stuff is dull as dishwater. There's no way around it. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. Hey, Carlos. Uh, last time when we left off, we were talking about five things that you. Well, you, can do. you like waste no time. You like right, right, get to the uh, meat listen, of the matter. Listen, listen. These people who are who are watching and, and visiting us, they don't have time to mess around. Time, time is money, man. They don't have time to waste. That's right. These are busy people with important things to do. They well, want to know five ways to improve their marketing. Okay. Get better clients and stuff like that. Go to the library. <laughs> So, so, anyways, uh, you and I were talking before we got on today, and we were talking about some of the things that um, that we can do to help get better paying clients, and and actually just to drum up some business. And you know, surprisingly, our lists were very, very similar. Right. And so, um, I thought what we could do today is kind actually, of actually, actually, there were a whole lot more than five. There really are. There's it was actually a, hard work to whittle them down. We had about fifty of them. Yeah, we had about fifty of them. <laughs> Um, but we're going to focus on five today, and I think what we would like to do is um, you know, we'll kind of start at the beginning, and then we'll kind of work our way through to things that are slightly more advanced. Okay. So um, what we can do, then, I, I think, Carlos, is we'll, we'll crack out our list here, and we'll get rolling. So if you don't mind, I'm thinking about maybe uh, I would one. How's <laughs> The what? I'm going to read the first one. Okay, go, go. Okay, yeah, put your, your seatbelt on because here we go. All right, all right, before you get started, some of yes. these may seem on the surface like you've heard them before, and you probably have. But the question is not have you heard it before, but are you doing something with it? All right, go, Bob. That's an excellent point, Carlos. So, so you may have some of these things already in your arsenal, but we're going to tell you how to do them even better. Okay. Better. Go. I'm all like how I emphasize that. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's number one. Uh, first one is get your own website. And when I mean own, your own website, I'm not talking about like a, like a freebie site like um, Behance or, or um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, so one of those other sites. Um, th this, is, this is the site that is going to act as your hub. Okay, so when people come to it, they're going to find, you know, either your name or your business name on this website, .com. All right. This and and the reason that I'm doing this is because this you control over every single thing that you put out there, particularly things like um, how to get in touch with you, your contact information, all the content that goes on there. Um, this and it also and I don't know if if um, we've talked about this before, Carlos, but I think this gives you um, a little bit more of a professional. Um, uh, air when it comes to um, you know people looking for you that kind of thing they realize like hey you've got your own website this guy means business he's serious he believes in himself he's he's got it going on right so <laughs> yeah I think having your own I think having your own website always you know gives off that presence mm -hmm. you know and <clears throat> aside from that you know the power of having your own site. People know that you're just not. People know there's a lot of free sites out there. Uh, when you're a professional, look, you invest in your own domain, you invest in your own hosting, so that you can have complete control over what is your property, uh, essentially to to market your business. You're not looking for the cheapest route, which is like you know, going to one of these other uh, sites and and just posting up a, a you know a profile, a free profile. That's fine as part of the overall strategy for, for having your website. You need your own website to, to be the hub for this thing. And I think when clients are looking for you, if all they see is that you're on a bunch of different, you know, um, a bunch of different free sites, which they all look different, and there's no um, continuity with the kind of look and the branding that you're trying to create through your own site, it, it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to shine well on you. So I, I think it's really important to invest a little bit and have your own website, and yes, you can branch out and have all these other sites uh, that you can link back to, uh, but having your own website is really, really important. 
That's right. That's a good point. And that was something that I wanted to mention was we're not saying don't have um, all these other websites. Don't, don't use them. What we're saying is have this one website be your main uh, hub so when people come to look for you, they know where to look for you. And I wanted to just elaborate that uh, on that a little bit more. Um, and when people get to your site, don't make it an Easter egg hunt to find out how to get in touch with you. That should be the simplest thing that you have on your website, how to get in touch with you and how to hire you. Okay, so if you have a website, make sure that right on the front page, it tells people exactly what they need to do. Um, Carlos, I don't know about you, but I've been to a couple of websites and I think, hey, you know what? I'd like to get in touch with this person. And there's no contact information on there. I don't know if it's because they're, they didn't want, they were, thought they were going to get spammed or something. <laughs> What's the point of having a website if you don't have contact information? <laughs> so yeah, if you're, yeah, it gets so pretty difficult sometimes. Yeah, if, if, if I open up a website and it doesn't just pie me right in the face, then I think you're, you're creating something that is going to be difficult for people. So really what you want to do is you make it you want to make it as easy for people to hire you as possible you all know the frustration of going to a site and then you have to go through you know 20 different steps to find this person don't make that your website um, so uh, and then have your, have your you know most people put their contact information on a contact page you know it wouldn't be a bad idea to, to, to put your contact page, you know information on almost every page or of the most highly trafficked traffic pages on your website Put it right in your masthead. Uh, my buddy uh, Cedric Honstadt, um, he, he, he was commenting on this uh, a while back, and, and he said he put it right in his masthead. And I was like, duh, why didn't, you, why didn't I just yeah, do that? So absolutely. I did. Yeah, so yeah. when you go to my website, if you don't see my phone number on the home page, then, you know, <laughs> then, then what's the point? So make it easy for people. Make sure that they can hire you right away if they love your work. They're going to want to get in touch with you. They're not going to want to have to jump through hoops. There are lots of other artists out there who are doing exactly what you're doing and are easy to get in touch with. So make it easy to get in touch with you. Good point, Bob. Thank you, Carlos. I'm going to, let, I'm going to leave number two to you because uh, number two, I think, was your baby. Uh, the blog. Have a blog on your website. We all know, we've all heard about that. Uh, this is a problem that I've, I've found uh, with a lot of artist websites that we create content that's geared towards other artists, whether that be intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, we do a lot of tutorials on how do we came up with this cool drawing or how we do this in Photoshop or how we do this in Illustrator. And the fact is that clients that hire you are not interested in that. The people that are interested in that kind of content are other artists and other illustrators. And that's, that's who you're attracting point. through your website via I'm your blog. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Carlos. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that. I wanted, I've been wanting to talk about this forever. Um, when you're an artist and you're <clears throat> marketing to another artist, the only thing that's really going to happen, because uh, most artists don't buy artwork, uh, is you're going to get a pat on the back, it's going to feel great, and then suddenly you're going to be like, hey, how come I'm not getting any work here? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, uh, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> yeah, you had to just jump right in there. I did, part. I had to dive I like, in. I like that, that's good. I was so um, glad you called that out because that's one of those things that, that has just been frustrating me for years is, uh, is artists marketing to other artists. And, and by the way, I'm an artist, and if you're marketing to me, cut it out. I don't want to buy your art. <laughs> <laughs> Got my own art. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I, I think it's done on a subconscious level. I mean, we're mm. we're we're creating oh, yeah. content that we that we personally enjoy. That's right. And um and we feel that other people visiting our site will enjoy. But the thing is that when you're when you've got your niche, your 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 focus, your marketing focus of clients that you want to attract to and want your website to speak to, that's not what they're interested in. Uh, so so maybe we are looking for a pat on the back subconsciously from our peers uh, mm -hmm. to to show them how we came across uh, doing this concept art or how we created this technique to do something or a, a nice cool looking piece that we're proud of. Um, but the point is that if you wanted to attract clients, that's not going to do it. Uh, if you're a mascot illustrator, for example, instead of going into how you create your mascot illustrations, which some, you know, the process of how you do the business aspect of, as far as when a client comes to you, how you approach the project, you know, maybe the kind of questions you ask, how you develop the idea, 
um, the interaction you might have with the client through the process of working with you. Those things are important for the client to know and those things they may want to know. They, they're not going to want to know necessarily the, the, the technical stuff. Yeah, um, so if you're a mascot Photoshop. illustrator, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said they're, they're not going to care if you're using Photoshop or not. Yeah, exactly. They, they don't care. That's just a process to them. Right. People that are hiring don't care about the process. They just want the work done. So if you're a mascot illustrator, for example, what you might want to talk about is why you should have a mascot, why it's important to your business. Uh, if, you, if you're looking for a mascot, why it's important to your business, the kind of uh, impact that having a mascot would make on your business and your marketing materials. And, you know, if, it's, if, it, if it would be a, a branding situation, how the, the improved branding can increase their sales or improve their business. Uh, those are the kind of things that you want to focus on through either case studies uh, and that kind of thing with your with your potential clients. So that when they come there, if they're looking for mascots, they are getting the answers that really would solidify their decision to call you and hire you, or at the very least, get in touch with you to go a little deeper and, and find out some more information. Right. That's an excellent point. Now, I just wanted to add one thing on there. I know I was kind of joking around about, you know, artists, marketing to artists and stuff. Um, if your clients happen to be artists and you're an artist, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine to market to other artists. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because, you know, to a large extent, I mean, if we're going to be like really honest with everybody, I mean, that's basically what you and I are doing right here. I mean, we're, we're yeah. creating content that's geared towards other artists, but we're not teaching them necessarily. Uh, is basically what we're offering them are skills that they need as artists to improve their business, whether it be the drawing side or the business side. Um, but that's the content that we're creating. So yes, our market is artists. So we're we're speaking to artists. Right. So so gear your your material towards the people that you want to um, <clears throat> to to work with. So if your content is um, you know logos like Carlos was saying, make sure that somebody who wants to buy a logo is going to find your content interesting and is going to want to read it. So all right, let's jump to uh, the third one here. Now this is one that um, we, that I was talking about earlier, and you and I were talking about earlier, uh, is referrals. Right. Um, maybe you can elaborate on this a little bit. I, you, <laughs> you and I talked about this about a year ago, and I I, I posted a video over on my website uh, recently, and I realized <laughs> a year had gone by, and I had not posted my referrals. So I got on the on the ball, and I posted my referrals. But um, talk me, a little bit about why you your testimonials. Yeah, testimonials. So, so talk a little bit about why this is important. Well, because it, it lets people know that there are other people that, that have worked with you and the kind of results they've gotten. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that you can go into the testimonial on how to write or how to um, coach a client on how to write a, a proper testimonial that's more benefit oriented versus emotional, you know, um, uh, benefits that you know Bob was fun to work with, you know, versus. Bob, you know, delivered on time and he made the presentation exceptional and he increased our sales. And, you know, that's more uh, a more benefit driven testimonial. So, I mean, there's different ways to do it, but testimonials are really important just to let other people know that other people have hired you. And it just makes them, it helps build that no like and trust factor, especially the, the trust factor, uh, to know that other people have, have got gotten um, good results from working with you. Right, exactly. So I should probably take the one down that says Bob is ruggedly handsome. Uh, sure. <laughs> that, that's missing Sorry, on my Bob. nose, by the way. <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about um, the the fourth one here. Um, you had mentioned um, when you're putting out uh, your marketing material, your your I guess you could you could call this advertising. Uh, when you're putting out your advertising. Um, you were talking about the idea of putting together a campaign versus a one-off. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, before we jump onto that one, I've got one note mm -hmm. here on, on the blog one uh, that okay. we touched upon, and we can just okay. touch on it really quick, is I've had a couple of artists in the past create uh, how, to, how to hire an illustrator or hire, hire mm -hmm. a designer or whatever yes. your, your focus is, a, a document that basically outlines how to hire, in this case, let's say an illustrator. Mm -hmm. So how to hire an illustrator. So you take the, whoever's on your site looking for work that you might be doing, 
you out you create a document outlining the, the process of how to look, the kind of questions to ask, uh, where to find people that, that they might be looking to solve their problem. Create a document that's going to answer all those questions for them so that you're giving them something helpful to go ahead and and and, and uh, to help them on their search. Um, and at the end, basically, you're you're all arrows point to you essentially. Um, that you can solve this issue for them. But in general, you keep the document uh, as general as possible, just things that they can do and things they should look out for, uh, whether it be paying up front or copyright or ownership of artwork. Let them know because a lot of clients that you might get to your site aren't necessarily seasoned art buyers. So they don't know the process. They don't know what goes into uh, hiring out for a logo or hiring out for a mascot or hiring out for an illustration that they may need. So take them through that process. Process. Don't think so much as being a salesperson trying to like sell them on on what you do. Your website is there for that. This document, the purpose of this document, is to create trust. Okay, you're giving them something of value, something that's going to help them. Whether they choose you or choose someone else, it's to help them figure out the right person for their job. Okay, so right. so come from it from that space where you're just trying to be helpful. You're not really trying to sell anybody. And at the end, you say, look, if you want to discuss this further or, you, or you're interested in, in, in maybe discussing your project with me, you can contact me here, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and that's going to be extremely helpful. Even if, they don't, even if they don't hire you because maybe you're not the right illustrator for the project, I believe that they'll, be, uh, they'll remember that gesture of you taking the time to educate them to be make a better choice for themselves. I don't know how to mute my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. We're, we're talking with the dog today. Uh, and you got a delivery, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, can we pause this or something? I got, no, oh, dude, we're, we're rocking and rolling. All right, so let's, let's take it from there while, um, while Bob answers the, the door and shuts his dog up. <laughs> so what do we got here? Uh, the next one would be uh, that that Bob mentioned is the uh, for your marketing would be the campaign versus the one-off. Uh, now this is something that I that I've done in the past and it, it's really worked really well for me and I've I've got, I've got a couple of uh, friends and clients who who have used this as well. Typically, when we market ourselves, whether it be for email or uh, mail pieces, what we do is like we you know the typical. Illustrator will send out something quarterly or once or twice a year, just a postcard, or and nowadays a lot of email. Um, instead of doing that, or in addition to doing that, I should say, create a campaign, mix things up a little bit so that the client, your clients, aren't always um, getting the same kind of thing from you at the same, you know, during the during the holidays, for example. Mix things up. If you create a campaign, create like a, maybe a four or five step campaign where like maybe every week or every two weeks you're sending out a postcard, maybe a postcard and an email, a uh, postcard one week, an email the next, S switch it up a little bit and with the campaign what you're doing is differently from your one-off uh, postcards or mailers is that you're creating a story, you're bringing them along in a story. The first one sets the groundwork, the second piece uh, feeds off of the first piece the third piece feeds off the second piece. So you make it like a continual a continual story. Come up, be creative, have fun. You know, I, I don't believe that art directors uh, hate getting mail in the in, uh, promotional pieces if it's something that's entertaining and creative and, and, and kind of brings them along. So I think if you come up with a campaign, think of a process, a little a theme or something that uh, delivers a message that's important for your art director, for important for your audience, whoever that audience for you is, whether it be an editorial director, or advertising direct, art director. Um, think of, you know, cute ideas, interesting ideas that you think that, they, that would move them along. And if you have this sequential campaign for like three, four, or five pieces, I think you, what you're doing is you're creating an environment where you're creating more of a connection with that person um, in a very short period of time. And even though that they may not hire you at that moment, you're creating a foundation um, and, a, and, a, and, and a connection with them that you're not getting just mailing out every quarter or, you know, or every, you know, every six months. Are you back with us, Bob? Yes. <laughs> we like to keep it really professional here. In the so, so what did you get at the door? Right? What was the delivery? 
<laughs> was it pizza? Yes, actually it was. No, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this at the end of the broadcast, but um, I think one of the things that we're thinking about doing here is actually um, putting together some some content uh, uh, where we're going to kind of up the, the ante a little bit and we'll actually do some paid content where you guys can do a course with us and you, you won't have to worry about doorbells ringing. <laughs> <laughs> magazines being delivered to well, the dur- during a, during a survey that I've been running a lot of people want um, more in-depth uh, content with us and sure. more you know more hands-on stuff so we're going to be creating a lot of that for you guys so um, that'll come up shortly but that's uh, beyond okay, the scope well, let's this, talk this particular about, Google Hangout yeah, let's, let's, let's finish up this one and then we can talk about that at the end so the last one that we have here is joining a, a network uh, s- something that um, that I think uh, you had mentioned to me many years ago uh, when we first started um, hanging out together was the idea that, you know, you, Bob, you ha- have to actually leave your studio at some point <laughs> and do some, you know, join some organizations, um, get out and start to socialize and start to make some connections. So um, talk a little bit about this one for us. Well, you know, the networking for me, um, I- I've always done, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of networking. You know, even well, even in the early days. I mean, before the internet and all that kind of stuff. Every time we say that, we sound so old. Um, but but you know, before the internet and stuff, the only way I met clients was face to face. So, uh, getting back to that is just something that that I've been wanting to do over the last you know few years because I'm getting tired of just being in this room all day. So, uh, but you know, the importance of networking is you know that that the importance of that face to face or as close to face to face as you can get um, is really really important. You know, joining uh, industry associations. Uh, Now, that can be in your own industry or related industries that can feed into your industry. Now, what I'm talking about because we're talking about finding, you know, high-paying clients is not joining other illustration associations or or guilds or something because that's just a bunch of other illustrators and how often do illustrators hire other illustrators? Uh, no, I think we covered that earlier. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, it can, you know, it can happen if an illustrator has a backlog of work and is and is we, willing to feed it to you. But you know, most illustrators that I speak to are all looking for more work. I don't, I don't see very little of them that have a backlog of, of work that are handing it out to other illustrators. Mm-hmm. So what you want to do is join other industry associations that are that are businesses that can feed into what you're doing, and that's going to depend a lot on your own personal interest as an illustrator and what what you're looking to create. Um, you may have a focus in martial arts or something, and you're creating a bunch of images that have to, that relate to martial arts schools or martial arts in general. Um, one of one of our guys is uh, uh, the the work that he's starting to focus on is mostly in um, in in the religious uh, area. So it's all you know dealing with churches and religion and all that kind of stuff. So that's his audience. That's his, that's the core of of his market. Uh, so you you know you might want to get into associations clubs that are related to the kind of work that you want to create. So that's where you know focus in your work really becomes really important because then it, it actually becomes a lot easier to find um, your potential clients when you're more focused because there are organizations and clubs usually um, either online or offline uh, for those interests. Uh, secondly, uh, what do we got? Speaking. Speaking is another area that I've been doing quite a bit of lately. Um, you get invited to speak in different associations, different uh, uh, groups, and if the group and the association is something that, <clears throat> again, that is in line with the kind of work that you're providing, um, it opens up the doors to a lot of people uh, interested in being able to, to, to wanting to work with you. And not only that, speaking to some of these networks uh, or some of these associations, it kind of positions you, and this is something we, we haven't really spoken a lot of, about, mm-hmm. maybe we can get into uh, at a later date, is the position you know, the positioning of a lot of these things. So, like, even in, getting back to the blog post, the, the content that's client-geared, all of these things help position you as the expert in your field and that people want to be able to hire you versus someone else. Yeah, good point, good point. Um, so also one of the other things that you had mentioned to me one time was to keep your eyes open for opportunity even though the group may not be specifically geared towards what you're thinking there are a lot of opportunities out there that you may not realize right off the bat so one time before we were talking about um, 
you know, this dental association thing. So do you want to elaborate on that just a little bit? Yeah, I'll quickly uh, touch on that a little bit. Um, because I don't know, you know, most people probably never even heard of that story. So, uh. <laughs> if you've not heard of that story, uh, that interview between you and I is over on the uh, Creative Independence site. So you can go to creativeindependence.net and look for the interview with Carlos. It's probably one of the best interviews I think I've done. And maybe what um, we can do is maybe repost it on on Drawbacks as a, a some point or something. Yeah, yeah. It, boy, that the information in that article uh, just changed the way I was doing business. So. Uh, you may want to check that out. Maybe we can put up a link or something like that. But that interview that you and I did, you, you really went into some detail about um, looking <clears> outside <throat> your, you know, the, the area that you're normally doing business for other opportunities. Yeah, just just quickly, I'll recap. It, it was basically a, an illustrator that I was in touch with, who was a children's book illustrator, and uh, she was complaining about how the, you know the industry has changed and um, how they're not hiring as much illustration anymore, and the book publishing industry is suffering, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you know, it just kind of left me thinking a little bit, and I was actually on a forum, and I, I didn't have the opportunity to, to kind of reply to that. I just wanted, I just want, it was basically out out the door, and, and I didn't just didn't have time to reply to her um, question or her her, um, her post. So anyway, I had uh, a couple of things that I had to do. I had to take my, um, I think it was five at the time, four or five, uh, my youngest to a pediatric dentist, and I ended up going to the office and and uh, basically. Found out, found a bunch of like whimsical artwork all over the the dentist's office. This was a white collar, you know, worker, uh, does very well, nice looking office, really nice and big, and had all this whimsical art all over the place. So anyway, one one thing led to the other. You know, it just kind of triggered that that post that I had read about this children's book illustrator, and here I am, like sitting in this pediatric dentist's office with a bunch of whimsical illustration all around me. And this is, I thought, this is like a perfect opportunity for someone who does children's books mm -hmm. to create content, you know, or artwork for people in the dentist industry. So it just occurred to me to ask the uh, dentist when, when she finally called us in. I asked her, I said, where do you get all this artwork from? Is there a place that supplies you with, with dental kind of uh, themed artwork? And she says, no, it's just her sister and her mom. Usually when they go to like, you know, garage sales or whatever, they'll pick up anything that, that they see that might be applicable that, that they think I might like and they you know and they, and they send it to me so I started asking her if there was an association like a, a of other dentists you know for pediatrics that that she belonged to and she said yeah there's a national organization national pediatric Asso uh, dental association and then there are also local chapters and there's one right here in Palm Beach uh, where I live uh, that she attends so Right there, there's like a given. I mean, you talk about shooting fish in a barrel, mm, right? Uh, absolutely. You know, if if you're a so just as an example, if you're a, a whimsical children's illustrator, doesn't matter what style. Um, this is this would be an opportunity where you can like create connections with people who already buy this kind of uh, artwork. I mean, she had a mural on the wall. She had tons of stuff all over the walls because they need to make the kids feel comfortable when they go into these environments. So it's, everything is very kid-like. They have a lot of children's books and all sorts of stuff hanging around. So if there's an association, for example, you can join that association as an illustrator who has a, you know, who has a style that would appeal to this audience. You can become a member of this association It'll probably cost a couple of hundred bucks just to become part of it. But you, what you do is you end up getting uh, your get on the newsletter newsletter list and start developing an understanding of what this market needs, looks for, and what the kind of problems they're looking to solve. So you can even at this one point, you know, if, if you're if you've got a head for marketing, you can create marketing material for them. You can create, you know, there's a there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's endless the ideas that you can create for for that market. But the thing is that you can create, you can contact the the, organ, the organizers of that association and ask to be invited in to talk about marketing or using artwork in those spaces and be, you know, and be brought on as a speaker at one of their events. There, now, these people are always looking for speakers that will help their members improve their business. So chances are really, really high if you put something together and you get the, you devote the time to get a clear understanding of what kind of problems you can solve for this audience, that they'll bring you on to speak. Now, if they bring you on to speak and now you're in a room full of, you know, 2,000 pediatric dentists 
what are your chances of that, you know, a large portion of them or a high enough portion of them approaching you about getting work done? I mean, and that's, that's unrelated. That's not, you know, children's books. That's not editorial. That's not advertising. That's something completely unrelated. So, you know, it's really powerful to look outside and just kind of take the blinders off and see all of the possibilities. Yeah, that's, I, I love that story. And, and it also reminds me of another one that Owen Garrett was talking about where he mentioned there was a, a, a seascape painter who started to um, attend uh, a certain yacht club or something like that. I, I forget exactly how the story went, but um, she was she was looking for people who would be interested in <clears> buying <throat> her art, you know, and, and all of a sudden she went from, you know, just painting seascapes to actually painting, you know, yachts and things like that. And and imagine, you know, the kind of commissions you can make off of something like that. So also check out um, Go in, uh, Owen Garrett's, <laughs> Go <and Eretz. laughs> check out Owen Garrett's <laughs> interview uh, over on Drawn by Success because that's a good one too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Owen's, Owen's a really nice guy, clever guy, yeah. um, you know, really smart more. about how he approaches his business. Yeah, yeah. So where do we go from here, buddy? Okay, so what I wanted to talk about a little bit is, um, you know, here we are doing all these Friday hangouts and things like that. We, we were talking um, earlier about uh, putting together a course in this kind of material, something that uh, we could actually sell and people would be interested in buying and where we can actually spend a little bit more time going into depth about some of these things. So, you know, when you, when you come and see us on these Fridays, we sort of skim over the surface of a lot of these things, you know, and, and I, I was thinking, you know, it, there seems like a, a, an opportunity here to go into so much more detail than we're, than we're actually going into and, and to actually creating uh, something I think people can use and to kind of help their businesses out. So, um, yeah, if, if we, um, if we create these courses, uh, you also don't have to worry about <laughs> my front doorbell ringing and you might even get a little too, Beginning, <laughs> but no, seriously, um, we're yeah, we're actually thinking about putting together some stuff. So, um, if you guys are interested in that, um, we're going to be putting together some information, and, and we'll be putting that over out over on the uh, Drawn by Success site soon. Yeah, so that's just a little heads up. Um, so anyway, let's recap this real quick mm -hmm. uh, for everybody, so that because uh, I know we kind of rambled a little bit. Uh, so number one was what the website. So the website, yeah, get your own website. Make sure that the information on your website about how to hire you is easily viewed and can be found uh, right away. Don't make it an Easter egg hunt. Um, and then we talked about um, the content on the site, so the blog part of the website. Um, make sure that you educate the people who are coming to your site and you provide information for them that's useful. Make sure that it's targeted to the right so try to resist the temptation of marketing your art to other artists. Um, then we talked about uh, referrals. Um, so uh, posting a referral on your site is a great way to um, to get people to you know, testimonial. I keep why saying referrals. Say referrals. I don't know. I love the word referrals. You know why? <laughs> you know why it's referrals? Um, the referrals uh, dropped into my head because I, I hear that um, over and over again over on. Uh, the um, the marketing show that I like to listen to. I love marketing. They're always oh, okay. talking about getting referrals. So for some reason that just keeps. So let's let's cross out the word referrals and we'll put in <laughs> testimonials. So testimonials on your site. Um, people who have a good have had a good experience uh, working with you. Um, get them to write one for you. Um, try not to wait too long before you're done with that project to ask them. Uh, you know, strike while the iron's hot. Um, and then we talked about the campaign. So this was um, about uh, putting together marketing material in a sequential order, something that is going to um, uh, allow the people who are receiving it to expect further content from you and to, to sort of develop a little bit of a relationship with you throughout your campaign. And then the final one we had is to join a network um, and to start networking through that organization. Did I get them all? Uh, I think that was it, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, yeah. so, well, that'll do it for today, Carlos. Apologies for the doorbell <laughs> interruption. <laughs> well, I just hope the pizza is not cold now by the time we get back to it. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we aim for an, an air of uh, truth and realism here on the Hangouts, on Friday Hangouts, <laughs> so... <laughs> If only I had like a little, like a like a webcam that I could have had attached, like a helmet cam, and then you guys could have followed me downstairs, 
you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, that that would have been cool. You got to work on that, Bob. Have yeah, that ready for next time. I think we're going to work on that. I got to get one of those little go cams, you know, we'll make yeah, it a yeah. live go cam. <laughs> Maybe you can bungee off the second story window <laughs> yeah. and you can have something exciting to show right everybody. Down to the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just bungee out the window, pick up the pizza, and then bungee out, and you don't have to pay. Well, I could, and then I, next on my next trip down, I just hand them the money, and then you know, push it back up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, there you go, Carlos. So that is another Friday hangout. Thank you for joining me. I had a good, I had a good time with you today. Hey, thanks for everybody to uh, check it out. Um, please share the video if you find it entertaining, informative, or any of the above. Or you want to just make sure um, of me with my doorbell ringing and the dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> share, it with, uh, share it with your friends. Share it on your networks. We're trying to get the word out. Um, you know, one of the things that Bob and I are really, really passionate about is having artists be able to succeed doing the work they, they love. Uh, we've been very, very uh, fortunate and, you know, to a large extent, I think, you know, lucky. Uh, I think Bob will probably admit it. Um, you know, we're really, really lucky to be able to have been able to do what we love to do, which is draw and create, um, you know, for ourselves, basically, uh, for the last 20, over 25 years. And one of the things that I, that really pains me is to see um, creative people that are trying to start their businesses and, you know, and, and can't really make a go of it because either they don't have the right plan or they don't have the right mindset. Um, and they may be giving up before they should. You know, it, it, it's really hard to watch people like that because we know that as creatives, you're, you can't help but be creative. You know, if you're working a nine-to-five job somewhere, you know, you're, you're like biting at the bit, you know, just to get back home to, to sketch out that idea that just popped into your head, you know. So we really want to facilitate the process of being able to get you from point A to point B, and whether it's, Point A being that you're working a nine to five and you're looking to get into freelance full time or that you're already freelancing and not really making a good enough go of it and you want to improve your business, that's really where we want to be able to help you the most in trying to um, bridge that gap for you guys. Yeah, that's a good point, Carlos. It took us, you know, it took us quite a few years to get here and, and we went through a lot of trial and error with some of the things that we're doing and hopefully, you know, by watching what we're doing here or, or listening to some of the information, we can take a little bit of the pain out of it for you guys. Um, it's <laughs> the learning process is, is always interesting, but you know, it's not always the kindest thing in the world. So hopefully, you know, some of the stuff that we're sharing with you guys, you'll find useful. Excellent. So yeah, so if you have your comments or, or, or you know, any comments or questions, just leave them below wherever you're watching it, whether it be on Google Hangout or on Facebook. I have no idea where, this hell, where the hell this stuff shows up. It's like magic. We, we create it. We press, we press live, magic, we Carlos. press stop, and then it just appears everywhere. It's, it's, it's not magic. It's not magic. It shows up on the website because we put it there. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining All right, guys. Later. Bye-bye. I think we're still live. We're still alive? Yeah. We're going to want to film part two now? I can't find the button. <laughs> <That's> lower right. <laughs> Come on.